Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter project every single weekday at 1.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time give my honest thoughts on how that's being ran. So if you enjoy that kind of content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button. Also, quick show note, tomorrow I will not be doing it. I'm going camping with my kids. They have the day off. And also, I just got a new webcam. I have not had a chance to install it, but next week we'll be back into the picture-in-picture -picture where I'll be over here in the bottom left-hand corner, actually with higher video quality, which is awesome. But right now, I'm very excited to be checking out the most popular project, most popular game excuse me on all the kickstarter right now that is paint the roses a cooperative puzzle game in wonderland and this is from north star games who looks like they're doing a little bit of a rebranding here i don't think i've seen them on kickstarter in quite a while they had a big Winston wagers that just kind of fell on its face uh, a couple of years ago for whatever reason i don't remember what the deal was about it and i haven't seen them doing much since then so i'm glad to see them back at the top of the heap because i love north star games i think they put out some great games try to outsmart the queens of hearts in this cooperative game of logic so it's a big moving logic puzzle it looks like it's got minis i see the artwork showcasing the artwork i will say i do like the fact that i know it's two to five players ages 11 plus 60 minutes this is the kind of thing i can play with my family love when they put that up here so is all, but uh, is there anything I'd like to see the price? You know, especially considering this looks like a smaller box game. If it's 30, 40 bucks, just bam, slap it on there, get it out of the way. I think, but it's already raised one hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. Awesome. Let's see why. And yeah, once okay. So now that we're zoomed in, look at that really intricate looking minis in there. Very nice. A most curious cooperative game. As, all right. So as always, when I go to this video, I'm thinking three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? Ooh. Logic, deduction, and discussion. Let's go. Hello, Im oh, I hope. How do you pronounce your name? I do apologize. Hello, Emmanuel. 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 Uh Follow us down the rabbit hole, through the Cheshire Forest, and beyond the Mad Tea Party, where the Queen of Hearts has appointed you and your friends as her new royal gardeners. From the design studio that created evolution, climate, and oceans, comes a new game in the. I like what they did right there. Uh, they talked very briefly about the theme, but when they were talking about the theme, they also interweaved, like, some of the artwork, which is cool. But then right there, they, they just did the can you do it. Like, I saw that pedigree, and I say to myself, all right, I feel comfortable. I've either played some of those games, or I know of some of those games. There's some very popular games. So can you do it is already answered. So now it's do I want it, how much is it? The fanciful world of Alice in Wonderland. Your task is simple. Decorate the garden in a manner that pleases the queen. Paint the Roses is a cooperative deduction game for two to five gardeners. Work together with your friends to decorate the garden according to the Queen's secret wishes. Okay. But the so that right there, let me know if it was just me, but I tried to figure out what exactly was going on in this because they spotlighted it for what, like a, a solid 10 seconds exactly what's going on there, and I have no idea. Like, that did not help me, and maybe it's just me, but let me know if that made any sense to you. But the queen will not make it easy for you. Her fancies can change on a whim. And as you progress, she will get increasingly angry. And increasingly fast. St and I like that. That was that kind of showed me exactly how that's going to work them uh, in the gameplay. I thought that was... That's a really good shot. I don't understand what it all means, but it gets me excited. Stay one step ahead of the Queen's eager axe, and your artistry will go recognized across the land. But make one mistake too many, and the last words you hear will be... OFF WITH THEIR HEADS! Face the Queen once again in Escape the Castle, an expansion for Paint the Road. Okay, so now we're straight up pivoting from here's the base game to here's an expansion. I will say... That first minute and 19 seconds, whatever it is, I thought that was a really well done video. Like, I don't know if I know enough about the game, but I know it's a cooperative puzzle style game. I like the components. I like the the artwork. Uh, the mechanisms seem relatively straightforward, even though I didn't quite understand what was going on. So I felt like that was really well done. So now we're into the expansion. I like how they transition this because I actually, a lot of games, because let's be honest, this is the new industry standard now. We're not just making a game with the Kickstarter. We're making a game plus expansions with the Kickstarter. And, if, and we just saw that yesterday with the um, that $500,000 one, the, the car racing one or whatever the hell it is. Uh, that was them making essentially four, three or four expansions along with the base game, which just, I think there's a good way to handle it. And I think there's a not a good way to handle it. And I think this is, I like how they're upfront about this. I do. Roses. As a seasoned gardener, you are no longer satisfied staying one step ahead of the axe. 
You dream of a life without fear, a life just beyond those castle walls. Find the five keys without losing your head, and you will find freedom from this life of servitude. Escape the Castle introduces six modules created. Bingo. Once again, can you do it? They are crushing it in this video. And all they had to do was mention their pedigree and then the designer of the expansion's pedigree. And like, I'm, I'm in. ...by an array of talented designers. Each module challenges you to rethink your strategy. What? Six different modules from six different designers. North Star Games wins a cookie. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Because now, like, because here's the thing. If you're not in the know on, like, solo games, solo gamers really, uh, a lot of them, I shouldn't say all of them, but, like, in the, the hardcore, have, like, favorite solo game designers. Because the weird thing is with solo game designers, they're much more like, uh, like, freelancers almost where it's like all right we need a solo game we need a solo version of this game we're going to bring in this person because they're you know an expert at making solo games and so by doing this and having you know six and i'm not saying these are all solo or anything i'm just saying by having six different designers have skin in the game those six different designers are much more likely to a you know try and make this be something that's big and successful and be helping promote this and b you know, the six different designers have six different fan bases are like, oh, Ben Goldman's got one. Oh, now I'm more interested. So I think that's really smart. I and, and the fact that and the fact that they're showcasing, you know, what games like Between Two Cities. I love Between Two Cities. You know, I think this is so well done. right. And now. features a lovable character from Wonderland to help you find the keys to freedom. The Mad Hatter will give you a new key. By the way, quick pause. If you've never played Wits and Wagers, it's Vegas, baby. You need to play it. It is the best way to play Wits and Wagers, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. Freedom. The Mad Hatter will give you a new key each time you throw a psychedelic tea party. Alice herself provides helpful eat me and drink me tokens to grow and shrink the queen. With Tweedledee and Tweedledum, you must guess a player's whim card in the same round that another player guesses yours. The White Rabbit will grant you keys if you can fill the garden under time pressure. The Jabberwocky will trample the garden to help you find keys. And the Cheshire Cat will give you keys for painting the garden in colorful pattern. See, so I don't like this part of the video. Uh, yeah, and Tony said it, David taped Cersei. Yeah, it's like when you, it just, it makes you more interested, I think. Um, so this, I, they kind of went away from it. I'd love, like, they're just telling me what these extra characters do, which is good. And I see the artwork, but I wish that they were like, having that shot of like showing me on the board like oh thematically because he's destroying the guard and there's going to be tokens that the spots will be covered or something like that i think that would be a better way to advertise right here uh but still that's a nitpick this is a great video i think back it on kickstarter to experience this curious cooperative adventure in wonderland okay do i want it for me personally i mean i, I wasn't like completely wowed by the actual gameplay or anything i didn't quite understand it but I still felt like the video was so well done that, yeah, like, I'm I'm interested. It looks like there was, it just looks like a good game, uh, which is obviously what you want it to look like. Can you do it? Absolutely slam dunk. And then how much is it? We still need to know. I'd love to know that. But I do know most likely what I'm going to want, which is the pledge level that's going to give me the base game and the expansion. So that's half the battle when it comes to here. So eight created, 25 back. So we got, yeah, we got a lot of people here. And that... I believe it. There was a lot of polish on that video, and I bet we're going to see a lot of polish on this Kickstarter page. I'm really excited to get into this. So let's see. Oceans, a standalone game. Evolution, the video game. So, uh, yeah, and, and Vegas, which wagers is so good. That was the one. Uh, so that one, that was some egg on the face. I remember that was six years ago. That was so long ago. So, yeah. Dude, can you do it, though? Let's make sure a standalone game. Make sure this is out. But, yes, I wouldn't worry about it at all. So, that's a big check mark. Oh, my gosh. 6,000 comments. That scares me a little bit. OSHA's has been nominated for three BoardGameGeek.com awards. Oh, that's great. The free-to-die digital implementations of Oceans is still available. I have a confession to make. One of the design goals for Oceans was to look past what is known about nature to explore. Yeah, so this is out. Cool. Feel comfortable. Yes. Can you do it? So, do I want it? How much is it? That's what I need to know. Let's not beat around the bush. And I think for a lot of people, how much is it? Especially because I don't think that video like wowed people. I don't think they, like, I feel like the, the orange has just been squeezed so hard on Alice in Wonderland games. Like, we get it. You know, anyone can make an Alice in Wonderland game because it's it's past the point of the, uh, I don't remember the exact wordage, but essentially you could make an Alice in Wonderland game. You could right now. And as long as you don't base it on anything in 
the movies, you know, the Disney movies, and you base it completely on the book, you, it's completely legal. And that's why you've seen such a glut of Alice in Wonderland games over the last, you know, decade. I think five years. Oh my god, exactly what I'm needed. I'm glad I, glad I helped Ariana. Uh, Pay the Roses, Ben Goldman with art by Jacques Davis. As one, So I just want the price here. Public domain. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, as... As one of the royal gardeners serving the Queen of Hearts, you must tend to the Queen's colorful rose garden, painting the white roses according to the ever-changing whims, all while staying one step ahead of her eager axe. Yeah, that looks good. It looks, and it looks like a good chunk of game for that box that I'm getting there, too. Ooh, those are nice tiles. Deluxe edition displayed. I do like the fact they mentioned that there. Work together with your fellow gardeners and use your deduction skills to decipher the Queen's whims in this exciting, clever, cooperative game. Two to five players, 11, 60 minutes. I knew this stuff. Don't be late for this very important date. At North Star, our goal is to create the highest quality games. After finishing the core designs of Paint the Roses in 2018, we've taken our time fine-tuning every aspect to create something special. That right there. Like, we get it. Can you do it? You have slammed the ball so hard on can you do it. I just need a price. I kind of hated that so many companies jumped on the public domain release. Yeah. I agree <laughs> to a certain extent because now it's like those themes are a little bit, I don't know, but it makes sense. It makes sense because ugh, it just makes, that's why Cthulhu is so popular because you don't have to pay anybody to use Cthulhu or Lovecraft. Back this campaign to support us and create great games that last. This is a game I will pass to future generations. That's a really uh, impressive quote, but at the same time, it's not because I want to know why. Like, what did you love so much about this game uh, that, that it became what I like to call an heirloom game? And I think I made that term up, so be free to use it. Uh, but that's essentially a game that you're just never going to get rid of, but you're eventually going to pass it on to someone because the game means so much to you. Maybe because of how spectacular it is or a special edition or sentimental value, something like that. I kind of hated that. Uh, I got to see this two years ago at Unpub. It is very much improved. And that right there. Thank you, William, for uh, giving us that little tidbit right there. The fact that it was at Unpub two years ago. And it's still been getting fine-tuned and tweaked and perfected. I love that. And the fact that it was Unpub, just in general, I love. And by the way, if you've not checked out Unpub before, next time you go to a convention, see if they have Unpub. It's a delightful place. You go in, you play games that are one day, hopefully they're going to be shopped to publishers or put on Kickstarter. Hopefully they will come to fruition. Uh, and then also they give away prizes. It's it's really cool. Just for playing games. It's all free. Calling, well, I shouldn't say that. The ones at uh, Origins was all free. Calling all puzzling minds. Your new boss, the Queen of Hearts, wants you to finish the Royal Gardens. A truly cooperative experience. Every turn, a new puzzle to solve. That sounds cool. Uh, claim difficulty. Audio adapts to the players. I like that. This is all great. I just want the price. This is easily my favorite deduction game since Hanabi. It's been a hit with every one I've introduced it to. I like that. Favorite deduction game since Hanabi. I think that's a solid quote. And, and because here's the thing. Hanabi is now old. <laughs> like We're so cold to the new. When I see someone drop Hanabi, I'm like, damn, yeah, Hanabi was great. I love Hanabi. It's right. I see it right now. I want to play it. Pledge reward. So here we go. F retail, 30 bucks. Okay, so this, I like how they labeled this, retail contents. $30, that's a great price. I would honestly put that on the marquee. Like, going back to that main image, I think that, yeah, let's take a look at it. I think that totally, you know, just 30 bucks anywhere on here would have just been spectacular. Because that is such a bargain bin price, you know. Now, granted, we got to get shipping. Now, looking at the backers, 1600 United States, so that's pretty typical there. Uh, just overwhelming U.S. retail and the expansion contents. Okay, and this box smaller than that box. I like how they're giving, they're kind of spotlighting the differences in the box size. I like there. So $25 for the substantially smaller box, uh, which is interesting. But whatever. I still feel like $55 for both those, not really bad in an eye there. You know, that's, that's $5 less than you're going to get for MSRP. No issues with the price going on here. Deluxe contents. So, see below for component details. I'm, I'm glad they list, uh, they said that. Now, that being said, I wish they would have done the long, sexy scrolling shot of all the components in the game, but I can kind of give them pass here because the price is so low. It's like, when I'm spending $85 on a game, that's where I'm like, hmm, let me see the thickness of those chips. When I'm spending $30, i am like, okay, what else? <laughs> like, as long as it's not printed on the back of a candy bar wrapper, like, I'm cool with the components for a $30 game. Deluxe content, so see below. So good, because this is very uninspiring of an image for, oh, wow, look how different it looks, because, um, oh, no, so the Deluxe is going to come with the expansion, and is that another expansion? What's going on here? What's that third booklet there? Okay, no, no, we're good. 
Uh, the base game alone is incredible. If it came out this year, it would be front runner for game of the year. Wow. That's uh, that's a huge quote. Like that's rocks on. Oh, are these clickable? These are clickable to the video. Uh, awesome. And that's what looks like a full gameplay. I'm going to assume if it's an hour and seven minutes. Excellent. That's a great quote. Uh, components. So now we're we're so they gave me the pledge levels, and now we're zooming in on the components. But actually, this is just a more in-depth pledge level section. And that's why I'm like, why even have these if you're just immediately going to go into this, which is the industry standard of just here's the price, here's the box, uh, and, and here's the components. And they're zooming in on it. I do like that. One Gardner Mini, I can see the intricate details of the miniatures. And you would say that, like, oh, duh, everybody does that. No, not everybody does that. <laughs> it was that $500,000 one Vendetta yesterday. Like, they zoomed in in some aspects, but it's like, no, I think every, like, I like this. I would like to see it zoomed in a little bit more, but yeah, this looks reasonable. And so that's just the retail edition we zoomed in. So then we're going to get another quote, and then we're going to go to this, and then we're going to get another quote, and then we're going to go into that. Okay. I don't mind that layout. I just think we should just get straight down to this. Let me know what you think. Do you think that this is necessary? Like, I would understand if they had this, and then there was, like, a whole bunch of other stuff in between, and then they got to this but having it right next to each other just feels redundant now that being said i'm really glad they didn't do that because it annoys the crap out of me when they do this and they do a bunch of stuff and they get to this but what else uh a must have for a deduction fan it's fun tense and full of cooperative puzzle solving that you love okay retail and expansion 55 and so now we're getting into the extras cool nine alice cards 10 white rabbits so each one of these is going to be a different module that you can interweave into there Nito, one of the most beautifully designed and boxed games I have ever opened. One of the most beautifully designed and boxed games I've ever opened. Is that actually talking about the game design or the graphic design? Because if it's about the graphic design, I don't care. <laughs> like, in any way, shape, or form. And I'm going to guess the reason why they included this is because this is like Gail Simone is Birds of Prey. You know, the Harley Quinn uh, thing so that's a big deal i just don't think this is a great quote once again i don't put that on gail i put that on there for putting it there because at the end of the day i don't even know what she's complimenting here aside from the box and graphic design or the game design and the other thing is if there was just an extra bit to this like if it just clarified on that um i just think it would be a better quote being able to see it all on the table box size and components maybe yeah i would love to see the box size because like this one I get it. It's like smaller, but I still would like to see it compared to something else. And I've and so few companies do that. And it just drives me nuts. If you have the graphic design people who could do that, which I'm going to guess they probably do, because this is a really polished page. And even if they're just putting it next to one of their other games, you know, like I think a cool shot would be, you know, if it was just like a stack of games that were all their games, because they don't want to spotlight anybody else's games, I guess. I don't know why. Um, but then you take it off that pile. So you, or maybe other games that are in this size box. I think that sort of information is super useful. And, and that's such a weird thing to say. <laughs> but, but I think people in the hobby would, would appreciate that. Let me know what you think. I, think. I think that'd be great. Just a shot that show you what other games are this size. What other popular games are this size box. All right. One Queen Mini. Emmanuel's with me. Let's, let's I'll pound that drum, make an industry standard, maybe in 10 years. Who knows? So here we're getting into the deluxe edition because this is what they want me to get. So this is the retail and the expansion. So I need to know what's different here. One queen mini, four flower tokens. So I'm pretty sure this is all in the other one too. One queen mini, four flower tokens. Oh, so they it looks like they use the, the ink stamp thing. So dual layer board. Oh, one deluxe garden board. Okay, so this is this is relatively clean and clear how they're doing this. I like this. I actually do like this. I'd maybe note that like this. No, I might. Yeah, I might just hit it over your head and say, oh, this means that this is what's different between that and that version. But I think they did a great job of do differentiating it. And not every company does that. So I like this. Acrylic tiles, 32 shrub tiles, game insert trays, acrylic tiles, and then, then both the expansions. So really, this is quite interesting. This is just a no brainer here because they're only upcharging you five bucks here. Yeah, because the deluxe version has the expansion built into it. I got to tell you, I like how they're doing this. Because essentially, you know, and here's the thing. I think a lot of people, 
you know, have issues with how companies do their expansions. And I mentioned that a little bit ago, but I kind of like how they did this. They're just saying, hey, right now we are not making one game. We are making Paint the Roses retail. We're making Paint the Roses expansion. And then we're making the deluxe. So we're actually making three games right now. But I don't mind it at all. And the $5 upcharge, like, no doubt about it. Deluxe edition is going to smash when we get over here. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, it might just be one of the finest limited communication games I've played. Now, ooh, I love that quote a lot better than some of the other quotes. And I thought the other quotes were rock solid. But limited communication. And now Hanabi makes more sense to me. Because in that quote, she just said deduction. Uh, my favorite deduction game since Hanabi. But that doesn't necessarily tell me that it's limited communication because I love limited communication games. So I think that's good. How to play? Like, is it a real one? Is it a real one? 14, 15? That looks like a real one. Awesome. Leading off of we that, I think that's great. Not to mention, I could have clicked on one of those videos to see a gameplay. So I have a tutorial. I have gameplay. I have quotes from people I know. I'm loving the cut of their jig, even though I'd love to see the shipping higher. Uh, I interviewed Dom when they were releasing Oceans and they had the early prototype cool and that's and that's so cool that's one of the coolest things about the more you go to conventions and you actually go to some of these rooms and try some of these games and then years from now you'll see it you'll be like oh that game finally came out like uh i did yeah I, that's always so cool so let's check it out one dollar the white rabbit just getting the pledge manager 149 dollars ten dollars for the jaggy walkie all right uh print and play cool 30 bucks for this surprised that this is taken by 131 people but whatevs we got the Cheshire Cat, which is going to get you 57. And then the big one, the Queen of Hearts, which, yeah, 2,320. I find it interesting that they're limiting it to 6,900. Um, like, what if they actually get to it? It's not like they're not going to open up another pledge level, right? Or maybe they would. I don't know. That's really interesting. Hmm. I don't see it as bad or good, but it's just like, realistically... If they're sitting at 6,875 people, I don't think they're going to be like, well, 25 more you can get in, the rest, sorry. No, they're going to print more games. I mean, because it's, it's money. That's how they make money, because they get the money for the game, but then they also then are going to be making uh, more games, which means the price of the games is going to go down. So that's that's odd. All right, overview. You and your friends of the Royal Gardeners, why am I getting an overview right here? Oh, because this is the how to play section. It's its own separate section. And you know what? I don't have a problem with this. I typically rant a little bit about how i think this section is typically too high i like it right here i'm done with my shopping experience except for the shipping once again we bury the shipping at the bottom because that's the industry standard for us nobody gives a damn about shipping for us let's just put it all the way at the bottom we could have just put it after the add-ons we could do it i believe uh so yeah but this is great this look and then we have the video leading off but then if i really want to read if i'm one of those readers you know i can get in depth with the so it's not just the reading but they have these moving pictures describing what's going on this is spectacular and once again this is just hammering home the can you do it like i don't think anybody's getting to this point in the kickstarter and be like i don't know if they're gonna be able to pull this one off no like they just they crush that so hard and going over that number would not be attainable for their expected delivery time frame. Yeah, it wouldn't. I. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine so. Well, shipping is weird. No, I don't know. I, that one, I will be honest, I am ignorant about that. But I don't think it would add time to it. Let me know if you're in the industry, if you know that. Like, if you go from, say, a 7,000 print run, which maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe they're moving a 7,000 print run, I guess. And then 100 in case there's, you know, things that get hurt or whatnot. To a 10,000 print run, does that add to your shipping time exponentially? April delivery. Oh, wow. April. Oh. Now, that explains why. So this is much more, I'm going to guess, a pre-order than anything. Like, if this failed... I'm going to guess that this, this, the wheels are already in motion on this. Good eye there with that April delivery. Because, yeah, there's no way that they're going to, like, just reach out to the factory and be like, Hey, China, what's up? You think you can make these games? Get them to us before April? No. Replenish. Uh, this might be my board game of the year. Wow. Rule booklet, downloadable. Awesome. Love that. Play online, tabletop simulator, tabletopia, uh, gorgeous art, a great theme and solid gameplay. Make this seduction game that can't help but impress. I'm going to guess Alex didn't really like the game that much with that quote. Like that quote, gorgeous art, great, we see it. A great theme, really? Okay, 
a solid gameplay. So yeah, so really, art, theme, solid gameplay. When I hear reviewers say, yeah, it's solid, I'm not like, whoa, gotta have that one. So I'm gonna guess, Alex, you know, and I don't know if you'd ever say this, but I'm gonna guess, I don't know, I don't think that's a great quote. And once again, don't put that on Alex. He didn't put it there. But that quote, least inspiring one, at least for me personally, that I've seen. Uh, Escape the Castle expansion. So now we just kind of just threw this in. This kind of came out of left field. Whatevs. We're going more in detail about the six. Oh, and here's where six different characters showing the card. And here's the thing. Now, yeah, I'd still like to see what the board state changes and how it looks with these. And maybe they don't have that ready. I can't imagine that, though. Uh, as a lover of logic puzzles, this was right up my alley. We really enjoy the charming brain buster. I like that. Logic puzzles. I think that's a good thing to mention. Help us design a module. What? Why is this buried down here? Why have I gone 28 minutes through this and just found out there's a cool way for me to interact and engage with this? Design a module? Like, this is this is super exciting. I think this needs to be exponentially higher because this is what's going to keep people coming back. How they doing it? I am so stoked. Uh, throughout this campaign, we will be creating a brand new module for the Escape the Castle expansion with the help of our backers. Follow our Kickstarter updates and join the discussion to collaborate with the North Star. I think that this is a misstep not having this in the video. I really do. Because they did a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of due diligence about spotlighting the five modules with the five designers and what they do a little bit, at least with the artwork, and what games that these designers had designed. But then I think at the end, they should have said like, oh, and the sixth module, you're going to help design. And then maybe it's like a question mark of what you've designed or something like that. And you're going to be doing in the updates in the comments and, and we're going to be making this together with some famous game designers or with our in-house team. Something like that. I think that's the kind of thing that gets people a little bit more excited about a kickstarter project especially a cheap kickstarter product at 60 dollars or 30 dollars if you just wanted to dip your toes into it uh design a module do their work for them you could look at it like that you could look at it like that but i don't think most people do let me know in the comments below i see it as a really cool way to get engagement with your community and make because here's the thing here's the bottom line if you actually get into that and you help that and you vote on things you're gonna try that module like tell me you're not trying that module you might try that module first and tell me you're not bringing that up at some point in the discussion with your game group tell me that and i will say yeah, i don't know if i believe you because like if you were like yeah i voted on that like they because it almost became a worker placement aspect or something like that i think that's a really cool thing to add now that being said i can't see the other side of it uh yeah they're tickling the algorithm right there uh the, which is why i think it should i don't think it should be buried here i think that should be spotlighted in that video at the end now follow our kickstarter updates and join the discussions to collaborate with the north star studio design team so yeah they're trying to get people in the updates in the comments awesome final decisions will be made through community polls excellent excellent it's just one out of six too and here here's the way to here's the way i personally look at it I was already pretty impressed with the module when they said there was six things in it. Like, I think about some of my... And I'm not the biggest fan of module-based expansions in general. I like when you just throw everything in a box. I don't have to read a special set of rules. Like, oh, it's just more cards or, like, a new mechanism. But the bottom line is I look at Splendor, which I think is my favorite one that I can really think of that has modules. And that one only had four modules. So the fact that there's six modules and the whole shebang is going to cost 60 bucks plus shipping, I, I got no issues with this. I got no qualms. Now, if this were a $100 game, that might be a different conversation. I feel the same that module will always feel subpar to me, even if due to being biased. That the that, that module will always feel subpar. Interesting. But what if it's more, how, like, I don't. And I, I'm not trying to criticize. Like, how do, how can you feel that way, though? Because it's like, you haven't played Like, I can understand if you play it, and you're like, oh, this isn't as good as the other ones. But, like, without even playing it, like, what if you play it, and you're like, oh, my God, this is way better than, than everybody else's. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a really interesting science experiment. And to be quite honest with you, I want to play this module now. Like, I'm going to reach out to North Star Games, because I've reviewed some of their stuff when this comes out, and be like, I, hey, can I, can I do a review on this? Because I'm just interested to see what that looks like. This module will feature a new character from Wonderland with art by the original artist. All physical game pledges will receive the new community creation module for free. All physical game pledges? Really? So even the retail pledge is getting this. So this is not one of the six. This is in fact an addition 
to the base. So I don't like how they're advertising this in any way, shape, or form now. Because at first, I thought this was only going to be for the majority of the people of the Queen of Hearts. I thought this was going to be one of the six modules. But no, this is for everything. Like, this is just going to make the original base game better. Uh, that's a really interesting idea. I would pound the drum a little bit harder on that. It's a very clever puzzle deduction game. The twist surprised me. I don't care about the quotes anymore. I'm still, I'm still caught up on this little section right here, which I think is just fascinating. Why no stretch goals? Stretch goals are a common part of Kickstarter campaigns, but we've opted not to include them for these reasons. Best possible game. The artwork components are already of the highest quality. Wait, 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 wait. If this, so this is going to be not in the base game. It is going to be something else entirely that's going to be sent out, I imagine, with the base game. It would have to be at a later time, right? It has to be at a later time. Because this is actually coming out in April 2022. I just don't see how they could design this extra aspect. And that's fine. But I would mention that here, I think. Uh, I honestly love the fact they didn't do stretch goals. Well, I will say, I think in lieu of stretch goals, they tried to do this. And right now, they're number one in popularity. So, it's getting engagement. It's working. Whatever they're doing is working right now. I'll be interested to see how it works next week and two weeks from now. But the bottom line is... I personally find this more exciting than stretch goals as well. But I could see if you weren't engaged in this, why you would definitely want stretch goals. And I don't think people are wrong. Uh, because some people don't want to get engaged with their Kickstarter. Some people are like, this looks cool. I'm going to back it. And then hopefully in two years, it will be here. They don't care about the updates, the comments, anything else. So I understand that too. All right. Uh, best possible price. Knowing the components in advance allows us to lower the manufacturing costs, which means a lower price for you. Reduction of fear of missing out. Stretch goals increase development time. The game looks great. And Jack Hayes Davis's vibrant and colorful take on Wonder Wonderland really helps it shine. So the game looks great. Which either says, I have not played the game. Or, uh, I'm commenting on the artwork. Either way, I don't care about that. Like, and once again, I'm not putting this on Eric. They put the quote there. So this is a preview. But it's just, I, I don't know. I don't like that quote. Uh, and colorful take on Wonderland really helps it shine. I, I, I hopefully the the gameplay does. Uh, why back now? Cheaper prices, early delivery. The first wave of Kickstarter backers will be shipped to backers three months before Paint the Roses gets a retail release. Uh, so most likely, yeah, they're shooting for April, then they'll have that out next year at Gen Con Origin sort of thing. Makes sense. Deluxe edition, not gonna retail release. It was sold directly from us. Free promo module. Once again, I think this is so buried. I think that needs to be higher because that is because it's not anywhere in the main image. No, the fact that you are going to create a module and this will be a module that everyone will get for free. I think that and it's going to be very limited, very exclusive. Like that is like so cool. Like think about if Simon did that. They're like, we're going to make as many uh, copies of this mini expansion and then maybe like plus 500 or something like that. And then they're gone forever, forever until the 20th anniversary of the game or whatever. I actually don't mind that. I would love to see that be something more people do. Support a small publisher. Previews and playthrough. Preview, don't care. Uh, Hi, five minutes, 23, don't care. Preview, don't care. Deduction or death. I thought it said there was some playthroughs. Or maybe the 30 minute, maybe that was a playthrough. I bet it was. Okay, it is a playthrough. Awesome. Whatevs. Uh, and I think most people are to the point now when they see a preview, they're just like, whatevs. And I do previews, so it's, I get to say it. <laughs> That's one of those things. Like, I get to say that. It's okay. I'm a, don't judge me. I do previews. Uh, watch live. During the comment Kickstarter, there'll be several live plays of Paint the Roses. Cool. Driving engagement. Driving people back here. All clickable. Awesome. Brothers Murph. Great. That one has already happened. So if I click on there, it's going to take me straight to it. Great. On point. Excellent. This is a very fun deductive game that really had us both thinking strategically. Okay. I would hope so. Paint the Roses, Deluxe Edition, now we're in components. I just want shipping. Like, that's all I need here, honestly. Like, do I want it? The price is low enough, and I feel like they did well enough, and this company is... Like, I don't think I've ever played a game from them and said, man, this game sucks. In fact, I'm pretty sure most of the games I've played from them I have liked, and the overall majority I have kept. Uh, they have one of... Honestly, now that I'm really thinking about North Star Games, I think they might have one of the best track records of any game company and I'm not just trying to kiss their ass here. I'm really trying to think of some North Star games that I've gotten rid of. I even like that weird cowboyish game they had a couple of years ago, uh, which a lot of people didn't like. 
All right, social links, whatever. Where's the shipping? Paint the roses deduction done. Unless it's over here. Unless they actually did over here. Nobody does that. Yeah, nobody does that over here. All right. Uh, that's a tech thing. Tech and uh, product design will actually put the shipping over there. It's so delightful. Board game companies don't because, you know, what? it's in flux, I guess. Anyone who's followed the news around international shipping, yada, yada. Wow, this is a lot. This is a lot to read here when I just want to see $18, United States. Below you see our uh, shipping estimates. We're based on industry information for 2022. We have custom-friendly shipping to the following territories. U.S., cool. This is great. Uh, so these people will not be charged VAT, I do believe. U.K., EU member states. Uh, due to these new VAT laws, we are currently processing paperwork with governments in both the EU and U.K. Although we don't anticipate it will deliver impact delivery times in the regions, we are aware that if local governments did take longer to process paperwork and delay it. Oh, so this is great. Like, this is actually really upfront and transparent. I just don't like how much text is there. I'd like to see some pictures. But this, okay, here we go. Look at this. This is beautiful. And every single pledge level has the shipping done. That just drives me nuts when I see companies who do the pledge levels, but they don't have the, the prices for all of them. So 13, 14, that is so bad for the industry right now. It is. It is. Uh, Alaska, Hawaii, get bent as always. <laughs> And that one, I do, yeah, that, that sucks. All right, uh, but with this one, I like, Alaska and Hawaii, like, this could go in a, well, never mind, I should say that. 20, 22, 40, 16, 18, 20, so that's, that's wow, that's pretty solid. Uh, UK, 15, wow, okay. So the shipping section looks good. I don't like all the text at the top, but like some pictures, but dang. I'd say they did a banging job on that, spe on that area right there, cool thing stuff I'm, I'm so over this by this point it's just going on forever uh oh so now we're talking a little bit about the modules all right cool let's check out the faq the updates the comments let's get this a grade and get out of here what is a pledge manager okay faq let's get out of here uh 139 comments and three comments wow i wish <laughs> i mean i guess this is the one where we started to ask a question and this is the one where we just patted ourselves on the back it's uh we did this promote this support the campaign thanks again and this is why you should always end with the question right here i think uh yeah i always think you should end every single update with a question and, and because here's the bottom line you know three because it's not necessarily about making the update better it's about driving engagement over 2,000 backers in the first foot help and here we go help us design a kickstarter module awesome and they're having people do it in here look at all this chit chatting up Okay, I don't see any side talk. Don't see any side talk here, which is really what you're trying to go for. But look at this. This is great. And they're having people do it twice. What? What? Why are people posting twice North Star games? Now I have to read. I'm intrigued, but I'm totally all for that. You know, I'm the guy who's like, if you're a first created zero back you should go back 50 things for a dollar a pop spend 50 bucks and all of a sudden you look like a member of the kickstarter community and then i'm the person who also says if you don't want to spend 50 bucks you should go back 50 things that are for a dollar that are very clearly going to fail so you don't even have to pay the 50 dollars but you still look like a member of the community so i'm all about trying to skirt my way around the system i'm gonna guess they told them to post twice uh okay be sure to follow our kickstarter updates and join the discussion to collaborate with the north star studio final decisions will be made through community polls suggest a character we need your help picking which character feature in the new module, so be sure to have your say. If it's been a while since you've read or watched Alice in Wonderland, here's a refresher in some of the characters. Excellent. Because here's the other thing I always say. Asking a question is great, but sometimes I see companies fail at asking a question because they ask a very specific question. And asking a very specific question is just, it, it requires you to think more. So if you're going to ask a specific question, do something like this. Make it clickable. I go here, hopefully this is just... Yeah, super, okay, this isn't super simple, but, uh, oh no, yeah, it is. It just didn't load for me. So these are the different characters. Great, it took me right there. Love that. Next week, you can vote for the most popular character suggestions. To help you pick, we will include brand new character sketches based on your choices created by the game's artist, Jackie Davis. So, awesome. So they're going to get that this week. Vote on who it is. Next week, voting on the artwork. I love how they're doing this. And this... This is not the kind of thing that most companies are going to scrap. You know, this was planned out. And whoever planned this out, I think, is doing a great job. And that's why this is number one. You know, that's why this is number one on tabletop games, despite the fact it hasn't made as much money as a lot of other games. Look at that. 495000 
you know, 226,000. Now, granted, and, and so awesome. Excellent. 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 Uh, be sure to let us know what the new Alice wanted camera you would like to see in the comments below this update or on the main campaign page. I love it. Yes. Spread it out to both of them. Both of them. Excellent. Now, why did people post twice, though? Watch the Brothers both play uh, Kickstarter projects we love. Hmm. So this is so odd. Why did so many people post twice? Bethany posted twice. Chase posted twice. Felicity posted twice. Marcy posted twice. Jay posted twice. Randy posted. So I'm going to guess this is some stupid, which by the way, I will say, if you're using uh, the Facebook app on mobile or on iPad, it sucks hard. I'm going to guess that's what's happening here. I'm going to guess this is just a Kickstarter bug. But the bottom line is that's a Kickstarter bug in their favor because Kickstarter doesn't care if this is because it's buggy. They care because this is a popping update section. <laughs> Despite the fact there's no side talk. Um, awesome. 139 comments. That's how you're getting yourself to number one on the popularity right there. After a numerous playthrough scene on YouTube, I really like an additional token type for every player to be added. The zero clue tokens. It's really hard to track the information in case of three plus players. So this is someone who got into those videos, got into the weeds, has an opinion. Let's see how they handle it. Uh, and ooh, prompt. So prompt. Lilia was an hour ago and they were seven minutes ago. Oh my gosh. The customer service is just making me so warm and fuzzy right now, especially after yesterday where it was a little bit lacking. I think that's a good idea, although, and I wish they would put this in their FAQ. It appears that all components of the game are finalized and being printed. Yes, once again, that was kind of something that, that, that like, when I think it was Emmanuel pointed out, like, oh, it's in April. That just means, uh, yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing really they can't do it. So none of our suggestions outside of the extra module have a chance as they can't even make corrections. Our notepads are especially helpful for narrowing down the correct and incorrect assumptions for whim. You'll be able to keep very good track of the clues as they are laid down. So they're trying to reassure their concerns. Okay. If I'm interested in two copies of the deluxe versions, the best is just to add the second one to the pledge manager. On Kickstarter, backers may pledge once. Okay. And, and so this is great. They are on point. And let's see, hopefully, when whoever's running this goes to sleep. We have somebody else coming in here seven hours ago, 19 hours ago, 20 hours ago, 23 hours ago. So, yeah, they are responding. They have people in here. And look at this. I'm seeing lots of green rectangles, which is exactly what I want to see. So, final grade on this one. I thought this was a really well-ran project. Do I want it? You know, honestly, here's the thing. If this was ran, if this Kickstarter was ran more poorly, I would have next to no interest in this game at all. But I think just because of how they are running this Kickstarter campaign and what they're doing and how they spotlighted what they're doing, I'm interested. Which I think means gives them bonus points. Because I think if you're an Alice in Wonderland fan, this is a slam dunk Kickstarter campaign. You know, especially at that price point. So I'm going to go with a big check mark on do I want it, despite the fact, realistically, I typically would not be that interested in this style game. Your link is to Thunder Road Vendetta that was canceled. Damn it, I forgot to fix the link. My my bad. I did this at like 1 in the morning or something like that. Uh, can you do it? Yes. Once again, bonus points here. How much is it? Thought it was solid. No issues with it there. I'm giving this an A. Yeah. I think it's an A. Nothing really concerns me here. You know, as long as you know it's a pre-order going in, like, I don't really care at that point. So, yeah, I'm going to give this one an A. Paint the Roses, a cooperative puzzle game in Wonderland. <laughs> give it an A. What's your grade, though? Let me know in the comments down below. And what do you think about that design a module idea? I am such a huge fan of that. I would love to see that become industry standard. And that would be so cool if it did. Man, that would just, that would, I think that would up the appeal of Kickstarter even more. Imagine if big companies really started to do that and really committed to it. Hmm. Well, let me know your grade in the comments down below. And as always, if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Bye-bye.